Hi everyone! In this video I want to cover all you need to know about fertilizer and how to fertilize your garden. I want to go through the different types of fertilizer, what NPK stands for, when to fertilize your garden, how to fertilize your garden and a few other general questions you may have. Let's get started with the types of fertilizer. So basically there are organic fertilizers and inorganic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers are animal or plant derived and are completely natural. Inorganic fertilizers are chemically derived, so they are made synthetically. Fertilizers come in either liquid form or in granular form. The liquid fertilizers need to be mixed with water before they can be applied and they have the advantage that the nutrients go into the soil very quickly so the plant can take them up a lot faster than when applying granular fertilizer. Granular fertilizers are just applied around the plant as they come out of the box or the packaging and they need to be watered in. That's important to dissolve the nutrients that sit in those granular fertilizers. Also with granular fertilizers it takes usually a few weeks until they actually fully release all the nutrients they hold. Depending on the type of granular fertilizer you're using, it's usually enough to fertilize only every two months, for example, or even with some of them, it's enough if you just fertilize once per season because they give off nutrients for up to six months. Next, let's have a look at what NPK actually stands for. So maybe you've noticed when buying fertilizer, depending on the type of fertilizer you buy, that the NPK ratios vary. And this kind of determines what the fertilizer is typically used for. So you can, for example, buy fertilizer for azaleas or rhododendron, for trees or shrubs, or more specific fertilizers like for boxwood or for bamboo or for conifers, for example. And essentially what the difference is between those fertilizers is the ratio of NP and K. So what does it stand for? N stands for nitrogen and promotes the growth of foliage and leaves. P stands for phosphorus and promotes the growth of roots, stems, blossoms and fruit. K stands for potassium and this is important for the cell function of the plant. So that means how well plants can turn certain elements and nutrients into their own food. What is also contained in fertilizer is traces of other important elements like for example calcium, magnesium, iron, copper, zinc or sulfur for example. On the fertilizer packs you usually see NPK and then you see three numbers next to it. So for example, to make it easy, if you see NPK 20, 20, 20, that would mean nitrogen is contained at 20% in this fertilizer, phosphorus is also contained at 20% and so is potassium. So all these elements would be in the fertilizer at a 20% ratio of the total mixture of the fertilizer. And now when looking at different fertilizers and depending on which plants they are made for, you can see that the ratios vary. Here, for example, this is comparing a tree and shrub fertilizer with a fertilizer for rhododendron and azaleas. So the one for trees and shrubs has an NPK ratio of 12, 4 and 17, whereas the rhododendron and azalea one has an NPK ratio of 16, 5.5 and 14. Higher NPK ratios, like I've just shown, are usually found on fertilizers that are inorganic, so chemically derived. When comparing this to organic fertilizers, the ratios look more like this. Here's an example of a tree and shrub fertilizer with an NPK ratio of 6, 4 and 0.5 and a rhododendron and azalea fertilizer with an NPK ratio of 6, 3 and 0 0.5. Comparing these numbers you can see that the amount of those three elements are way less in organic fertilizers because they are completely natural and also that the ratios of tree and shrub fertilizer and rhododendron and azalea fertilizer are pretty much the same. So when using those kind of fertilizers it doesn't really matter so much which exact fertilizer you use for your plants. Next let's cover a few general questions you may have. Question number one, do I need to fertilize at all? Well, yes and no. So technically speaking, plants do not need fertilizer to grow. If you think of a natural forest or any natural environment, no one is fertilizing that. However, what fertilizer does, it provides additional nutrients for the soil, which the plants can then take up to transform into their own food. 
And this is important in gardens, for example, or also for pot plants, because they are not in a completely natural environment. It's rather a controlled environment. This is why it is recommended to fertilize a garden or any plants that grow in pots. Having said that, older and more mature trees and shrubs are usually okay with not being fertilized or just being fertilized occasionally. Next question, can you over fertilize a plant? Yes, you can, especially when using liquid fertilizer. That's because liquid fertilizer can burn the roots of a plant, especially when used in too large quantities. So there it's important to really stick to what the packaging on the fertilizer says and not mix in any more than what is given. With granular fertilizer that releases the nutrients slowly and just over time, you cannot really over fertilize. But it's always important to check the recommendation that is given on the pack for granular fertilizer that is usually an, a certain amount per square meter or square foot. Next question is how much I fertilize related to the soil type I have in my garden? Yes, it is. So as a starting point, I would always start with the recommendation that is on the fertilizer package that is given by the manufacturer. But then also it's important to consider the soil type you have in your garden. For example, clay soil is at kind of one uh, end of the spectrum of soil types, which is nutrient rich, uh, heavy and retains a lot of water and also gets very dry and hard when there is no rain. On the other end of the spectrum, you have sandy soil, which is very light, has very few nutrients and does not really retain water a lot, so it has a very good drainage. And then another common type of soil is loam soil, and loam soil is kind of in the middle of clay soil and sandy soil, so it has the benefits of both of them. If the soil in your garden is leaning more towards clay or loam soil, you will not need as much fertilizer as you would need for a sandy soil, because simply it doesn't hold nutrients that well, and the soil itself doesn't contain that many nutrients. Now let's talk about when is the best time to fertilize your garden. And that's easier, that's in spring. So in spring is the time when plants come out of their dormant state and the growing season starts again. And this is when they need most of their nutrients and when it's important to give them fertilizer to produce additional food for growth. Depending on the type of fertilizer you use, the exact time when you apply the fertilizer may vary a little bit. So that means for liquid fertilizer, which the plants can take up a lot quicker, it's okay to fertilize in maybe later spring or when the first growth has started because the plants can make use of it right away. If you're using granular fertilizer, which takes a lot longer to dissolve and release the nutrients that it holds, it should be applied a little bit sooner, so rather in early spring, so that a few weeks later, when it gets towards the end of spring, the plants can actually start to take up some of the nutrients. What about fertilizing in autumn time? Fertilizing the garden in autumn time can be done and it will help the plants a little bit with having additional nutrients during the dormant season. So even though the plants are dormant and don't have any leaves, that's for the deciduous plants, they will still grow their roots under the ground. Maybe not as fast as during the normal growing season, but some growth is still happening. And so it makes sense to actually give the plants some fertilizer as well in autumn time, which will make them stronger for the winter and also give them additional nutrients and kind of a boost for when the new growing season starts again. Any evergreen plants also benefit from some fertilizer in autumn because they keep their foliage over the entire winter. Next, let's talk about how to fertilize the garden. So I recommend to go through the garden, make a list of the plants you have so that you can then get the right fertilizer depending on the plant types you have in your garden. Any liquid fertilizer needs to be mixed with water before applying it. How much of liquid fertilizer to use is written on the package of the fertilizer. Remember here that applying too much liquid fertilizer can damage the plants because it may burn the roots of the plants. When watering in the liquid fertilizer, also make sure that the fertilizer is not on the foliage or on the leaves. So try to just really water around the plant. Granular fertilizer is ready to go as it comes. And also here check on the packaging for how much is needed or recommended per square meter or square foot. Granular fertilizer can be applied by either sprinkling it by hand just around the plant, by sprinkling it and then raking it in, or by using a drop spreader 
The advantage of using a drop spreader is that you can regulate the amount per square meter or square foot more easily. The most important point when using granular fertilizer is to water it in after it has been put on the soil. If it just sits there dry, it doesn't do anything, it cannot release any nutrients. So it really needs the water and it needs to start to decompose in order to start to release the nutrients it holds. And they will go into the soil slowly and over several weeks or even months. For watering in the granular fertilizer, you can either use the hose after the fertilizer has been applied, or you can try to time the fertilizing with a rain forecast. So that means you would apply the fertilizer in the afternoon, for example, knowing or expecting rain for the evening, and then nature does the job for you of watering the fertilizer in. A good tip for large gardens with a variety of plants is to either go through the garden and using one fertilizer at a time, which means you would walk through and fertilize all the conifers, for example, by using a conifer specific fertilizer. Then you walk through with the azalea fertilizer, for example, to fertilize all the azaleas and rhododendron and any other acidic loving plants and so on. That helps you keep a track of what you have fertilized and to help you keep an overview. The alternative is to kind of divide the garden into sections and work with each fertilizer in each section and then you're done in that area and can move on to the next section. What if you do not want to use commercially or store bought fertilizer? The alternatives are to use compost, so they can be from your own compost pile, which may consist of grass cuttings, leaves, uh, shredded sticks, uh, kitchen waste, for example, and so on. And they usually gives a very good mix of hummus over time. It may take a little while until this is properly um, decomposed. And this can be applied to the plants as well. The other alternative is to use manure from cows, horses, or sheep, for example. And this is a fertilizer that is very rich in nutrients. I hope this video answered all your questions or most of your questions. If you have any more, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.